Hey everybody, welcome back to Hard Working Man. Today I'm building a roadside stand. My daughter Megan wanted to set up a roadside stand and Rachel taught her how to split up some wood. She's gonna be doing bags and bundles, see what works best. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you missed our last video. Click on Hard Working Man below this video and there will be a little videos tab. Click on that and our very last video was Rachel and Megan splitting up some bundle grade wood. So we were on our way to Home Depot to get some lumber to build this roadside stand and I found this. People give away pallets and everything. We drove past a welding shop and I nailed the brakes. I said, oh my gosh, Megan, you gotta see what I just found. And I wasn't sure exactly what it was, but I knew it was gonna be a great base to a roadside stand. And it was some two, or, uh, two by sixes and four by fours that something clearly was shipped on. I also have some plywood that was from a trailer that I redid that I had been saving because I save everything that's gonna work for the floor and the roof of this. So we only had to buy some two by fours so I can get this stand built for her. She's gonna paint it up. She's gonna get her bags and bundles made. We're gonna see what sells best and we'll get this thing put out so she can start making some money. So we got the base that we got off the side of the road for free. That probably saved Megan 50, 60 bucks at least, maybe more. We've got the plywood that came off a trailer that I redid, so that saved her some money. All we had to buy was some two by fours. And I'm out here now working with some plug-in tools and some of my Milwaukee cordless tools. I've got the cordless nailer and I've got the impact but my cordless sawzaw is up at the property, so I don't have that here today, and I don't have a miter saw that is cordless because they're like five or $600, but I do have my Ryobi, which all real carpenters have, miter saw, and EBL sent me a new power station with a solar panel, and I'm, and I'm gonna see if this MP1000 EBL portable power station can power the Ryobi chop saw or miter saw and my DeWalt sawzaw for this project. They also sent a solar panel, two of them actually. They're 100 watt solar panels. And I put this thing out the other day when we had a nice sunny day and it's a 100 watt panel here in Michigan. It was charging at 80 watts, which is pretty good for a 100 watt panel to get the full rated charging capacity out of it. Maybe you'd have to be down south closer to the equator, I don't know, but that's pretty good charging. I threw this thing out in the sun. It was at 45%. A few hours later, I went out and it was at 100%. Right now it's at 99% and we're gonna see how it holds up and if it can run this miter saw and the sawzaw because I have to cut this base down and I've gotta cut all the two by fours to build the framing for this roadside stand. So let me tell you a little bit about this portable power station. EBL reached out to me before and they sent me a 500 watt station. Chris in the wood yard has the 1000. He uses it all the time. These things come in so handy. And they reached back out and said, would you like to try the 1000 in a solar panel? I was like, absolutely. Because one, I now have a little bit of a track record with this company. I've used the 500 watt to power my sleep apnea machine. In fact, when we went down to Myrtle Beach on a road trip, I was able to bring my machine and sleep in the passenger seat of the truck while Rachel drove without snoring so she could drive in peace. I could get a little bit better sleep and it just worked out great. So it's the pure sine wave power so it can power my CPAP machine without worrying about ruining it. It can power laptops, your sensitive electronics, all that stuff. And we're gonna see if it can power some power tools so these things come in super handy. A bunch of people have different ones, but the EBL, I now can say I've used and I've been impressed with. I actually, when we were at the Hoosier Firewood Hysteria, I was able to loan the 500 watt EBL that I had to Dell from in the backyard with Dell because he was there. He had a sleep apnea machine, but he didn't have a way to power it. So I said, you know what? I've got it this 500 watt, you can use it. And he used it for the night, able to sleep with his machine which if you have one, it's a world of difference. So I appreciate these things. Now with the 500 and the 1000, I'll be able to keep one up at our other property so that if power runs out when I'm there to sleep after work, I'll have a way to sleep. And I'll also have one for when we go camping, when we take road trips. We've got a new van that I just picked up for when we go to Boonville, when we go to the Paul Bunyan show. When we make these long road trips, I can go in the back, lay down in this van, plug my machine in and go to sleep while Rachel drives. So let's get to building this stand. I'm gonna get it built. Megan's gonna get it painted. She's gonna get the bags and bundles made and she's gonna start making some money. All right, so real quick before we get to work, we're just gonna show you this. The, the 1000 is barely bigger than the 500. It's got all the same features, but more power. It's got the wireless charging on top 
It's got a flashlight here, and then it's got all the charging ports here that you can run, your AC, your USBs, your type C, and then this is how you charge it. So with two solar panels, you plug one into here and one into here, and then you can run all your stuff off from it. These things work great. The solar panel is easy to use. It just opens up like that. The cords store right inside this bag, and then it's got these little kickstands, so you can just set it up and angle it towards the sun. But enough about that, let's get to work. If you wanna know more about this and get a great deal on one, Amazon Prime Days, the 11th and 12th of July, 2023. There's gonna be a link in the description, click on that. You can pick this thing up at probably the best price of the year. All right, so the limiting factor of this build is gonna be the plywood that I had because instead of making my daughter buy expensive plywood, I said, let's recycle something that I already had. So I'll throw this on and I'm gonna to have to rebuild that base to the size of this. And then this is gonna be the roof, which will build the roof, will build the structure. This is an old bundle stand, which again, hardworking man videos. This is one I put out at my brother's cottage. It was a complete flop. All my reload, remote location roadside stands have been great except for this one we put it there it sold a couple bundles in a few months and it just didn't work out it's not nice looking it was a quick thing to see how it worked so i'm going to pull my nice sign off i'm going to pull the money box off and we're going to repurpose it for megan's stand so let's throw this one on here I am not a carpenter. If you want to watch somebody build stuff that's a carpenter, find a different channel. But I think I can do all right with this. I mean, I guess we'll see. So I've got this fit to the four by fours, but I'm gonna to have to cut this down and then remove this and reattach it. So let's get the Sawzall, cut this down and go from there. All right, I'm gonna get this base nailed down Try to cut that end off flush with the Sawzall. We'll see how good it is. I know it's not probably the best tool for the job, but it's what I have and I'm not a carpenter. I do love this nail gun though. I bought this during a bathroom remodel and it's gonna come in handy during the kitchen remodel too. All right, let's see how flush I can cut this. Get the power pack turned on. We're at 99% right now. I'm gonna see not only if it'll run these tools, but how much power it takes out of them. And then when I'm done, my Husqvarna lawnmower is out in the yard with a dead battery. It's a long story, but I wanna throw a battery charger on this thing and see if I can charge that instead of having to try to get a vehicle out there and jumpstart it. So we'll see if that works at the end of this video. Probably should have bought a new wood blade before this project, but I didn't. That blade's toast. That's going in the trash. Hopefully I got everything cut through. All right, let's get these blocks off, get it repositioned under there, nailed back on, hopefully, and go from there.
heavy breathing. I wasn't thinking about the fact that my nail gun won't go through two two by sixes and into the four by four. But luckily, whatever they had shipped on this, they have some grooves cut through that probably some strapping went through. So I can get these apart, get them nailed back on, nailed back together. And then we'll flip it off, flip it over and cut the ends off just like that. When we get done with this, we're going out to dinner. Rachel's on camera right now, and she doesn't think I'm going to get this done. And in my famous words, I said, this isn't going to take long. So we'll see. Luckily, I have this sweet stand for my miter saw that I got at an auction. If you watch, if you watch videos with me running the Samurai, and you see the little roller table that I have that I think is for a table saw. I got that at an auction to be able to do longer logs on the Samurai until I get my firewood processing center set up where I have the full conveyor roller tables. But when I bought that, it came with this stand, which I didn't even know what it was, but it's for my miter saw and that thing's awesome. So Rachel might give me a little bit of grief for buying stuff at auctions and buying stuff at a Facebook marketplace, but sometimes it works out and that thing's pretty sweet. I used to use just, you know, four by fours or two by fours, trying to brace the longer cuts on that or just work on the ground. Because like I said, I'm not a carpenter, but I do try to build some stuff to save money and that's gonna come in handy. All right, I've got those broke down and I was going to just nail them back on like this. I'm gonna to have to cut these two off with the Sawzall, which isn't great. But then Rachel was like, why don't you just cut those on the miter saw? Sometimes when I get working, I don't think straight and that's way easier. So I'm just gonna measure them, cut these on the miter saw, get them attached back on, cut the other ones off with the Sawzall and then we'll flip it back over and build the uprights and the frame for the roof. 39 and a half. Is the power pack gonna run it? We're about to find out. We're at 90%, so it used 9% running that Sawzall. It's a sweet stand I got there. Aren't you glad I bought it, Rach? Mm -hmm. All right, let's get this flipped over. Right in a knot. <laughs> that didn't work.
Oh, Rachel's real funny. I just went to cut and I hadn't plugged this in. I changed the blade and didn't realize that I didn't re-plug in. So she thinks she's funny here. Even though she's not in this video, she's still impacting it. I put a metal blade in, a bi-metal blade. Hopefully it cuts better than that busted old wood blade. Make sure I don't cut my cord here. All right, so now we've got the base built, cut off. It's not treated lumber on the bottom, but if need be, I can replace those two by sixes in the future with some treated lumber if they start to rot. So let's get the roof base built, 39 inches. Make sure this is square. 39 should be good, so let's cut those down. What's that? It does weird things when it goes sheesh. Okay. Uh. This miter saw stand might be one of the best accidental purchases I ever made. Because I used to cut on the ground and this is so much nicer. So we've run that sawzall a bit. We've run the miter saw a little bit. We're still at 88% on this power pack and it's running the stuff fine. Precision measuring. I'm a little gun shy running this because when I bought this gun for our bathroom remodel, 
I always heard of people that shot themselves in a hand with a nail gun and I'm like, how can you shoot yourself in the hand with a nail gun? I didn't realize that you could hit a knot and get a ricochet. So I was toe nailing a board in at 18 inches and it hit a knot and the nail went right into my thumb bone. Like it shattered my thumb. It delayed that project. Probably why I haven't been too excited to do the kitchen yet. But if you're wondering how people can shoot themselves in the hand with a nail gun, ricochets or you just try to work too fast but in my case it was a ricochet All right, we've got that. We'll put a couple stringers in here. Not gonna need too many, maybe two, and then we'll get the roof nailed down. Sweating a little bit here. It's not crazy hot or humid today, but uh, we're gonna be in the wet t-shirt contest, Rachel and I. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out Allen Family Firewood. Phil, they got a fun channel. Unfortunately, he had a pretty bad accident the other day, so he might not be shooting a ton of videos lately. I think he's gonna be okay in the end, but uh, he sweats a lot, I sweat a lot. Rachel doesn't sweat a lot, but I'm gonna be in the wet t-shirt contest. So check out Allen Family Firewood, give them guys some support. He does firewood for a living and he's gonna be laid up for a bit. But uh, go check that out and don't miss the wet t-shirt contest that we'll be posting here in a little bit. I think Phil's trying to take a little competitive advantage and not send me my shirt that I need for the contest. Well, the heat and humidity is crazy high here in Michigan, but I'm still gonna see what I can do. All right, we got that frame set. Now I think I'll set my uprights, then hook the frame to it, get that nailed on, then put the top on. Okay, I'm gonna cut these uprights to six feet and my base and my roof are gonna be about a foot. So it'll give us a five foot opening. I think that'll be good to stack bundles in and for people to get without hitting their head. I actually changed my plans. I'm going to cut all of these risers or uprights and then I'm gonna nail them to the roof frame so that I can flip them over and then nail it to the base and then attach the roof. Hopefully it's stable enough. If not, I'll cut some corner braces for the back part here to stabilize it a little bit. So we'll see how this works.
Man, that's a nice stand I bought. What do you think, Rach? Can't hear me. I bought this I wasn't sure how I was gonna build it so we just went to Home Depot I'm not a huge planner and we just get grabbed a random assortment of two by fours well a random number all the same size and uh, I was too short but I knew I had a few at home so we're gonna use two of those to give us our three on each side or six uprights We're still at 88% on that power pack, so it took some off initially, but running this thing, which I thought would take more power, seems to have taken less than the Sawzaw did. So I've got these clamps. I'm going to hold that, get these nailed in, and then I'm going to have to go off camera for a second, have Rachel help me flip it over because she's my camera lady today. The tripod's up at the property. We'll get it flipped over into position, nailed onto the base, and then get the roof thrown on. I'm just gonna put one nail in each leg so that we can line them up better with the base once I get it flipped. And then I'll put the two last legs on after it's flipped over. And I'm out of quick clamp, so I'm going to have to just use a regular C clamp for this one. Hopefully this works. We're about to find out. All right, we got it flipped over. I'm gonna get this secured. Probably not built to code, but it's gonna work for a wood stand. Well, I don't think there is code for wood stand, so.
ない。Hit my last nail, I bet. Oh, Whoa. There we go. All right, we've got this set up. It's not perfect, but it's going to work. We'll get the roof thrown on, get it nailed down, and... I think this thing's going to be stable enough built like this. Not bad for a lot of recycled materials. Should be able to fit quite a few bundles in here and we'll get a little extra support for the money box. So if somebody wants to steal it, they're gonna have to work a little bit more to get it. All right, this ended up being pretty solid. I think with it built into those four by fours, it helped. I'm gonna throw a few lag bolts in to sturdy it up some, but we're gonna just about finish this build up. Megan's going to paint it. I'll show you the signs we're going to throw on it and we'll get it set and she'll be in business. I wanted to try to build this rack high enough so people won't get hit their head coming in to get bundles. And it's a little bit off the ground so they won't have to bend down too far. Okay, there it is, pretty much built. Megan's gonna get it painted up. I'm gonna, after it's painted, we're gonna recycle this sign from a different stand. We'll get that put on. It's got the uh, cash or Venmo, hardworking man, the QR code there, and then the free fire starters, which people love. Watch our videos how to make them, throw them in. It'll be one per bundle. Helps people light fires. And then just our little price sheet. We do these in stickers so you can change it. They're gonna be $7 each or three for 20. We've got the lock box here. These work pretty good. Obviously, if somebody wants to break into it, they could. It's not theft proof. I use washers and I lag bolt it on. We'll add an extra two by four behind it so it's a little more secure. But uh, we'll put a link to that in the description as well. A link to the EBL Power Pack. Amazon Prime Days are coming up 11th and 12th. There's going to be deals on those. They come in handy. I really love having them. So let's go throw the charger on the Husqvarna, see if that power pack will run it. We're gonna go get dinner and when we come back, it'll be dark, but we'll see if it charged that lawnmower up. It's sitting where the hydro quit working and I gotta get it back up here so we can get it to a shop. Okay, we just used that power pack to run the miter saw, to run the saw saw, to build that roadside stand. It's still at 88%. Now we've got it hooked to a battery charger. I'm gonna throw it on 12 volts. We're gonna go get dinner, and when we come back, we're gonna see if this mower will start up. Right now, the battery is stone dead. It will not do anything, so. When we got back from dinner, the mower started right up. The power pack was down to 81%, so it used another 7% of the power pack to charge this mower from a stone dead battery. I mentioned the van, the hardworking man road trip van. This is it. A buddy from work had it. We were gonna look to rent it from him for our road trip to Myrtle Beach. Right before that happened, he got hit 
by some kid in a BMW. He hit him right here, knocked the back axle back. The insurance company totaled it, and I told him, hey, if you want to buy that back and you don't want it, I'll buy it from you because making a road trip with nine people, we needed a van like this, and I got a sweet deal on it. I've got the axle back into position so I can get it to a shop and get it fixed officially, and we'll be on the road with the hardworking man van.